uh, today we will discuss a method to construct transitive closure of a relation. Uh, this is an algorithm which is called Warshall's algorithm and we will see that it makes uh, computation much easy. However, before we go to Warshall's algorithm, we will just recall some of the ideas that we have discussed in the previous lectures. Now, our starting point again is uh, a set A. and a relation R on A. That is R is a subset of the Cartesian product of A with itself. Now, we have already seen what we mean uh, by a path uh, connected connecting an element x to another ele element y in A, we recall that, uh, uh, that idea. Suppose x and y belongs to A we will say that x and y are connected by a path of length k in R we say that x and y are connected by a path of length k in R. Well, if there are points a 1, a 2 and so on up to a k minus 1 all belonging to a such that x related to a 1, a 1 related to a 2 and proceeding so on up to a k minus 1 related to a, uh, a k minus 1 related to y. Now, uh, what we have seen that when we are considering a path in general, this path uh, need not uh, be through uh, distinct elements. That is to say, the elements A i's need not be distinct. In fact, these elements A i's have a special name. These are called interior elements of the path or interior points of the path. A i's are called the interior points.
of the path. Now these interior points as I have already said may, may not be distinct, but what we realize is that we can always uh, reduce any given path to a path containing only distinct interior points. Uh, for example, let us see uh, uh, this path that is x, let us suppose it goes to a point a 1 and then from a 1 let us suppose we go to a 2 and for from a 3 let us suppose we go to a 4 and suppose uh, this is not a 4, but let us call this a 3. Right. So, from A 2 it will go to A 3, right. then it goes to A 4, but suppose A 4 and A 1 are same. So, I have this and then suppose this goes to a point A 5 and then a 6 and then let us suppose we ultimately reach y. Now, here in the sequence of vertices a 1 and a 4 are same. Of course, what we can do is that we can cut this loop out and we can have a path from x to y as x going to a 1, then a 1 to a 5, then a 5 to a 6 and then to y. Now, it is not difficult to see that proceeding in this way, we can uh, reduce any path to a path which contains only distinct interior points. This fact has got some interesting consequences when the set A is a is a finite set. Now, we have already seen that a transitive closure of a relation R which is denoted as R plus is essentially the union of R with R square then R cube and so on up to R to the power k, but we do not end there we keep on going up to infinity. So, in general it is an infinite union of R j, where j starts from 1 and goes up to infinity. Now, this means that if we have two elements which are connected to each other by the relation R plus, suppose now these two elements are x y, then this means that there exists some let us say k such that k Mm, such that
x r to the power k y. Now, this in turn means that there are intermediate points a 1 up to a k minus 1 all belonging to the set a on which the relation is defined such that x r a 1 and so on up to x k minus 1 r y. Now, this we have already seen. Now, this means again that I can keep on reducing the uh, number of interior points to the interior points which are distinct and then uh, if the set is this, this is finite that is if if a is a finite set containing n elements a path with distinct element can be at most of length n then a path with distinct elements can be at most of length n. Now, considering this fact, we have already seen that uh, x r to the power k y will imply that x r to the power some i of y, where 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n. And this will mean that this x y this pair is inside the union i equal to 1 to n of r to the power i. This in turn means that r plus is a finite union of sets in case a has size n. So, r plus is i equal to 1 to n r i that is r 1 that is r union r square union and so on up to r to the power n. Now, once we have understood this, it is now clear to us that R plus will contains will contain pairs of elements of A which are connected to a path of maximum length n having distinct interior points. Therefore, if we can find all such elements which are connected then we have got essentially the transitive closure of R. This idea is used in Warshall alg Warshall's algorithm uh, which we are going to discuss uh, very soon. But before that I will recall again the direct technique that we have seen that is to just get the matrix corresponding to R plus which is essentially the matrix of R or matrix of R 
squared according to a special product that we have defined in previous lectures then m r cube and so on and up to m r raised to the power n. This sum of powers of course, gives us the matrix corresponding to the transitive closure, but the only problem is it is very difficult to compute these individual products and then take the, uh, the or of all these uh, products. We will now move on to Warshall's algorithm, but uh, we will first see an example. So, let us now consider a uh, particular set which is the set containing 5 elements. So, this is A, we name the elements let us say as A1, A2, A3, a 4 and a 5 right and we take a particular relation which is given by a 1 comma a 1 then a 1 comma a 2 then a 2 comma a 3 then a 3 comma a 4 a 3 comma a 5 and lastly we have another element a 4 comma a 5. All right. If we check the matrix corresponding to R according to the ordering given in A, then this matrix is of this type, this is 1 1 0 0 0, then we have 0 0, then A 2 A 3 1 0 0 then we have 0 0 0 then 1 1 and lastly we will have 0 0 0 0 1 and the fifth row is all 0 because a 5 is not related to anything. So, we have all 0 fifth row. In order to start Warshall's algorithm, we consider a sequence of subsets of A. So, the first one in the sequence is called S 0 which is the empty set the second one is S 1 which consists of only one element A 1 the second uh, the third set is a 1 a 2 the fourth that is s 3 is a 1 a 2 a 3 s 4 is a 1 a 2 a 3 a 4 and lastly S 5 is A 1, 
a 2, a 3, a 4 and a 5. Now, corresponding to these subsets, we will construct relations. So, corresponding to S 0, we have the relation W 0, which is same as R. Then, corresponding to S 1, we will construct a relation which we will call W 1, which is well something that we will derive from R and in a specific pattern iteratively we will keep on defining new relations W 3 and W 4 corresponding to S 3 and S 4 and then ultimately we will get W 5 corresponding to S 5 which we will claim to be R plus that is the transitive closure of R. Now, let us see how we get from uh, W 0 to W 1. Now, we define in this way that consider two elements x y belonging to A, then this pair x comma y belongs to w 1 if and only if x comma y belongs to w 0 or x comma a 1 and a 1 comma y both belong to w 0. This is very important, so we must have a close look at it. What I am saying here is that we are defining a new relation w, w 1 from w 0 and what is the new relation. So, given a pair of elements x and y, I should be able to say whether this pair, the ordered pair to be more precise, whether this ordered pair, ordered pair belongs to the relation w 1 or not. I will, I will say that x comma y the ordered pair belongs to w 1 if and only if x comma y belongs to the previous relation w 0 or it there is a path connecting x to y through the set S 1. So, this means that I have x over here and y over here and there is a relation uh, uh, from x to a 1 that is x r a 1 and then x a 1 r y and we know that a r and w 0 are same. So, we have a path from x to y if this happens or if x and y are directly connected through the relation r or w 0 whatever we say, then we say that it is in w 1. The question at this point is that how do we construct the matrix corresponding to w 1 
based on the matrix corresponding to W0. We see that the matrix corresponding to the to W0 is same as the matrix corresponding to R that is MR. So, I can safely write over here that M W0 is 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 and 0 0 0 0 0 and then when I am constructing the matrix corresponding to W 1. Well, I will put 1 at all the places where there is 1 in M W 0. So, I will put 1 in these two places and these are undecided, these are undecided, but of course, this is 1 and this is like this and then I get these are undecided points, but of course, these are 1s and then here we will get 1 over here and in the last one I will write like this. Now, I have to decide whether to put 1 or 0 in let us say this position that is first row and third column. For that the corresponding elements are a 1 and a 3. So, I have to check whether I have a connection from a 1 to a 1 and a 1 to a 3. So, that means, uh, in the matrix m w 0 I have to see what is the entry of the first row first column. So, let us now write as a symbol these entries as s i j this is a 5 by 5 matrix and let us suppose by symbol I write this as t i j 5 by 5. So, I am to decide whether t 1 3 is 0 or not for that I have to check whether a 1 is related to a 1 and a 1 is related to a 3. Now, that means a 1 is related to a 1 is given by the entry s 1 1 if a 1 is related to a 1 then s 1 1 must be 1 and this a 1 is related to a 3 then s 1 3 ought to be 1 also, but we see that s 1 3 is not 1, but it is 0. So, this is not correct s 1 3 is 0 therefore, T 1 3 is 0. So, we see that we have a rather simple rule we do not have to really think much we just put the uh, entries 1 wherever it is 1 in the previous matrix and for the rest of the entries we just write like in this case T 1 3 is product S 1 1 S 1 3 and in this case it is 0. Therefore, I will put 0 over here and if I go on like this I will see that uh, I will get 0 in the other places as well. So, if we 
consider T 1 4 according to my rule I have to only check S 1 1 and S 1 4 S 1 1 is 1, but S 1 4 is 0. So, it is 0. So, I will put 0 over here and then T 1 5 right. So, please see that T 1 5 is S 1 1 and S 1 5. S 1 5 is this entry which is 0 therefore, this is 1 times 0. So, it is 0. So, I have resolved this. Now, if we go on in this way, we will find the other entries to be uh, zeros. So, I will put it put all of them to be zeros. You can check check that on your own. My intention of doing this is uh, is that I would like to see what happens in m w 2. So, suppose now we have got m w 1 and I would like to construct m w 2, but first of all what is w 2? x comma y right belongs to w 2 if and only if x comma y belongs to w 1 or x comma y belongs uh, sorry or now it is a question of uh, intermediate point. So, it is x comma a 2 and a 2 comma y both belongs to w 1. So, if I, if we now look at the digraph corresponding to this. So, suppose I have got x and y. So, there in w 2 if there is a direct connection through w 1. So, I do not have to worry about uh, I do not have to worry about uh, what happens in between, but possibly either if we if we if we reduce it even further then there are two cases either you have a direct connection from x to y or we have a connection from x to a 1 and a 1 to y these are through the relation R. So, combining these two relations I will say that x is directly connected to w 1 and then the next possibility is that x is connected to a 2 through w 1 and then a 2 is connected to y through w 1. Now, each of this each of these segments can be blown up to something like this. right. So, you can have intermediate points, but this basically means that 
x is connected to y uh, in such a fashion that the intermediate points of the paths are uh, are lying inside the set S2 which is A1 and A2. is kind of straightforward, but this is something that goes on over and over again and eventually when we come to W n then if two elements are in W n that means that they are connected through a path consisting of of the elements in A as interior points, but well that is all about getting the transitive closure. If we, if we, if we have a relation which connects two elements through that relation uh, in whatever possible paths uh, containing the elements of A, then that relation is of course, transitive closure because transitive closure is union of R i is where i runs from 1 to n. Now, now let us see what happens when we when we want to construct the matrix corresponding to M uh, matrix corresponding to W2 that is M W2. So, we have already got M W1 well and let us write this matrix. All right. Oh, we have this matrix, and we would like to construct the matrix corresponding to M W two. I am sorry, the matrix corresponding to W two, which is M W two. According to our rule, we are quite safe if we put all these ones wherever they are. right and in place of zeros let us put small dashes these are the positions that we have to fill in and lastly we must not forget the last row that is all 0. Now, we start from here, this is right now P 1 3. Please note that it is also quite reasonable to change the S and T symbol. Now, M W 1 entries will be referred to as S i j's and M w 2 entries will be referred to as T i j's. All right, so now we are interested in find out finding out T 1 3, well it is undecided because in M w 1 it is 0. So, let us uh, patiently try to find out all these elements right. So, T 1 3 is now S 1 2 S 2 3 why it is S 1 2 because I am now interested in paths through the point A 2. So, S 1 2 is 1, S 2 3 is also 1. So, it is 1, I will put 1 here. The next entry 
is T 1 4. Let us compute T 1 4, this is S 1 2, which is 1 S 2 4. S 1 2 is this very special element now, which is 1 and which is going to appear in many places and S 2 4 is S 2 4 is the element here 2 4 which is 0. So, 1 into 0 it gives me 0. So, I will put 0 over here and then in the next entry x 1 5 this is s 1 2 and s 2 5 s 1 2 is of course, 1, but s 2 5 is 0. So, I get 0. So, I will write 0 over here. Now, we come over here this entry is s sorry this is T this entry is T 2 4 T 2 4 is S 2 2 into S 2 4 S 2 2 is 0 therefore, S 2 2 is 0 therefore, I have 0. Now, I write 0 here and then I come to S two five, which is S two two and S two five, which is also 0 because S two two is 0 and then I come to T of wait a moment here S 2 4 yeah it is 0. So, S 2 4 this is S 2 4 this is 0 and 2 5 this is also 0, but we forgot S 2 1 which is S 2 2 and S 2 1 which is of course, 0 and uh, we have T 2 2 which is again S 2 2 into S 2 2 which is zero. So, I have got this as zero. Again if we use the same way if we compute the other other entries we will see those are all zeros. I am not doing that here, but I leave it as exercise. Please use this same way for example, let us consider this element. What is this element? This is third row second column. Now, that is this is T 3 2. What is the value of T 3 2? So, I have to simply write S 3 2 and S 2 2. Now, what is the value of S 3 2? If we now check the matrix we will see that S 3 2 is S 3 2 this is this entry which is 0 S 2 2 is of course, 0. 
So, again 0 into 0, so we get 0. Next, we take this matrix that is m w 2 and move on to consider considering m w 3. We see when we compare m w 1 and m w 2, we see that there is only one change that is the first row third entry has become 1 and rest are all same. So, now I will write down m w 2 again and try to find out m w 3. So, m w 2 is 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 and the last row is all 0. Now, when we are considering m w 3, well before that now change s and t's. Now, these are my S i j's of course, 5 by 5 matrices and we consider m w 3 well whose entries will be denoted by T i j's and I hope that we will see some action here because uh, up to up to this point we are seeing that very few entries are getting changed right. So, uh, we we hope that we should get something nice over here that a lot of lot of lot of zeros should become ones. So, let us see whether it happens or not, but first to start with we will put ones in wherever there are ones. So, I will get like this and let us agree to put small dashes wherever we are undecided. So, we get something like this and again put 3 dashes and then again 1 over here and a 1 at the end and then we have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 dashes and a 1 and the last row consists of all dashes. Now, uh, we will we'll see what to do, well we will start with this entry which corresponds to T 1, 4. So, let us let us start writing T 1 4 is S 1. Now, what? We have exhausted 1 2 and now it is 3. So, S 1 3 and S 1 4. Sorry. I am wrong here, it is not S 1 4, we have to consider paths which go through 3. So, it is S 3 4. So, let me change this portion right. So, we get here S 3 4. Now, what are these elements S 1 3 well, this is S 1 3 and S 3 4, this is S 3 4, both are 1s, therefore, 1 into 1 is 1, therefore, we put a 1 over here and then we have T 1 5, which is S 1 3 and S 3 5. Now, S 1 3, well, we have, we can lock on to this element for the time being is S 1 3, we know that it is 1 and S 3 5, well it is a third row and we go up to this. So, 3 5 this is 1 again, so 1, so 1, so we will put 1 over here, I get a 1 here. So, the first row 
is complete we uh, go one step below to the second row where we have T 2 1 which is S 2 3 and S 3 1 according to our agreement and now we search for S 2 3 in the matrix well this is the second row and we go up we locate the point here. So, this is S 2 3 we can safely target this one for the time being. So, S 2 3 is 1 and S 3 1 well S 3 1 is this one so which is 0. So, it is 0. So, it is 0. So, we have got a 0 over here and then S 2 T 2 2. So, this is S 2 3 and S 3 2 which is again 1 into S 3 2 see this is S 3 2 which is 0. Therefore, we put a 0 over here. So, we get 0. Now, we come to the to the other entries that is to the right of the 1 in the second second row and let us see what happens over here. We have got T 2 3 which quickly gets translated to 2 S 2 3 and S 3 3. Now, we search it is S 2 3 we have already locked it which is this one and this is 1. Therefore, we put a 1 and S 3 3 well S 3 3 this is 0. So, I get 0 over here another 0 and by the way uh, there is a mistake over here it is not 3 because 3 is already taken care of from the previous matrix. So, I will I will cut this off it will be in fact a change over here I will cut this off right. So, we have got T 2 4 this is the fourth entry. So, we have got T 2 4 which is equal to S 2 4 and S again it is not S 2 4 it is it is S 2 3 right. So, we have we will have S 2 3 and S 3 4, but that is something different because S 2 3 is 1 and S 3 4. So, we have to search here and we come to this point. This is S 3 4, this is also 1, so we get 1. So, instead of 0 here we will get a 1 so we will get a 1 over here right. So, we go now to the element T 2 5 this element is S 2 3 and S 3 5. Now, S 2 3 as we have seen that it is 1 we have to search what is S 3 5 S 3 5 is this guy and this is also 1 therefore, you have got 1 over here. So, you have got 1 over here and again we now look at the remaining elements remaining are the remaining dashes small dashes. So, what is this one? This one is T 3 1 T 3 1 is S T 3 1 is S 3 3 and S 3 1. Now, S 3 3 is 0 because 
that is this entry. So, it is 0 into S 3 1, S 3 1 by the way is also 0. So, it is 0. So, I put a 0 over here, I know that it is 0. Then 3 3 2 that is S 3 3 and S 3 2, please see that I really do not have to worry about what is S 3 2, because once I have seen that S 3 3 is 0, it is 0. So, I put over here 0 and T 3 3, which is again S 3 3 and then S 3 3, of course, this is 0. So, this is 0. Now, next we come to T 4 1, which is T 4 3, uh, no, which is S 4 3 and into S 4 3 into S 3 1. So, this is S 4 3 into S 3 1. Now, what is S 4 3? S 4 3 is 0. So, I do not have to worry, it is 0. And so, it is 0 and whenever I am starting with T 4 and whatever it may be T 4, let us say T 4 i, this is going to be S 4 3 and S 3 i, whatever is the value of S 3 i, it is 0 because S 4 3 is 0, because S 4 S 4 3 right. So, I come here yeah S 4 3 is 0, so I do not have to worry, it is 0. So, that is why all these are zeros and C S 5 3 is always 0. So, we can in this context uh, generalize a little bit. So, for example, now we are interested in finding out the fifth row and so in general it will be T 5 i and that gets decomposed into S 5 3 into S 3 i, but S 5 3 when we search over here this is the element S 5 3 which is 0. Therefore, it is 0 into S 3 i which is equal to 0. So, we really do not have to com compare each and every element in the last row we can put all 0 over here. Now, we can do this thing another two times and if you do that you will find that m w 4 is same as m w 3, our way of obtaining is same and same for m w 5 all are equal to m w 3. This is something that I keep as an exercise, please see by using the same rule. Just remember that when you are trying to find out m w 4 from m w 3 put all once and wherever there are zeros for those entries the rule will be T i j equal to S i 4 S 4 j in case of m w 4 when S i j is not 1. So, if S i j is not 1, then the corresponding in the next matrix to get T i j do this and for M w 4 T i j corresponding T i j is T i j is the entry of M w 5 now and S i j of M w 4 use this idea 
right. So, this is for m w 4 when s i j not equal to 1. So, if we do like this, so ultimately we will see that the matrix m w 5 is indeed 1 1 1 1 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 and then 0 0 0 all 0 and we claim that this is equal to m r plus and therefore, this relation m r plus can be written as see this is r plus we can write from the beginning a 1 a 1 a 1 a 2 a 1 a 3 a 1 a 4 a 1 a 5 then a 2 a 3 a 2 a 4 a 2 a 5 then a 3 a 4 a 3 a 5 and lastly one element a 4 a 5 and that is all this is the transitive closure of the relation R. Thus, in this lecture we have seen by an example how to compute transitive closure of a relation by using Borsal's algorithm. Although we have seen a particular example, you will see that it is fairly easy to extend it to a general case where A is a finite set A 1 up to A n because then